All right, welcome to section 4.3 where we're going to expand on our knowledge on our logarithms that we saw in section 4.2. Um, we're going to gain some properties for this first section and then on the next section we're going to be solving some equations um, for our conclusion in chapter 4. So let's begin by doing um, a product rule for logarithms. So at the very top, now that we have graph logarithm functions, now we are expand the idea of logs by working with three properties. So the first one is the product rule for logarithms. So, let me get my pin going here. We're going to let b, m, and n be positive real numbers with b not equaling to 1. Now what does that all mean? Well, that's in this equation here. If I look at the log base b, of a product of two things, m, n. What can we do with that? And sometimes um, this will help us out when solving equations and such, um, but also just kind of a process of being able to say, okay, this property tells me I can do this and solve some problems with that. So log base b of m, n means that I can split that up as log base b of m plus log base b of n. So basically the logarithm of a product is the sum of the logarithm. So we're going to add those two things together, okay? So if we come down to this example and it says, okay, use the proper product rule to expand, that means get bigger in a sense, um, the logarithms with this expression, then here is the product. This is acting as m, this is acting as n, and this is my b. Okay, so to expand it, all I would do is do log base 6 of 7 and add to that log base 6 of 11. And that right there is all they want you to do for that type of problem. Okay, now <clears throat> here on this next example, I have log of 100 times x. Now, do not forget that the base of that log when it's not shown is a base 10. So basically, I can split it up with my product as a sum of those logs, so log of 100 plus the log of x. And again, what's invisible here is that base 10. Now, nothing we can do with this x, but notice I do have, if that's a base 10, I'm looking at this being an answer is a power, 10 to what power is equal to 100? Well, 10 squared is 100, so this whole log base 10 of 100, or log of 100, if you don't have that invisible base in there, or if you have the invisible base in there, this would actually be a 2. Because again, 10 to what power equals 100? It is a power of 2. So I can actually reduce this down even more into 2 plus log base x. Okay, so if there is something that you can do a little bit more to, please make sure that you do that. I'm sure my lab math would ask you or tell you that it's not simplified completely. All right, so that was the product rule. Now we turn to the quotient rule, meaning to divide. Don't forget, we're also going to let B, M, and N be positive real numbers with B not equal to 1. So similarly to the product rule, now we have log base B of M over N, where I have a quotient. This, by its property, is equivalent to log base b of m minus log base b of n. So you have a quotient and a difference, whereas up top you had a product and a sum. So the quotient or the logarithm of the quotient is the difference of the logarithms. Okay, again, a property that you just need to make sure that you know and that you can expand upon. So for an example like this, if I have a quotient of two things, I can then do the difference of each one of those individual logs for that problem. And this would be the final answer there that you have for that one. Now, here I have a natural log representation. So remember that the natural log of something is equal to the log base e of that something, okay? So the invisible base here is the natural exponential. So I'm going to split this with the quotient. So I would have the natural log of e to the fifth minus the natural log of 11. But again, just like this one that we had up here with our log base 10, this can be simplified a little bit further. If you remember, this is a base of e. 
e to what power is e to the fifth? Well, remember, natural logs and exponentials cancel themselves out, leaving me with just that power of 5 minus the natural log of 11. And that would be your final answer for that problem. So again, if you need to go further, make sure you simplify. All right. And our last rule that we have um, for this section is the power rule. So defining that, we're going to let b and m be positive real numbers, just like before, with b not equal to 1, just like before. And then we're going to let p be any real number as well. Then the third property says that if I have log base b of m to the p power, that's a power right there, or an exponent, then this rule tells me I can take this power out front, so we would have p times the log base b of m. So now it becomes a product of that power with the logarithm. So the logarithm of a number with an exponent is the product, meaning multiply, of the exponent and the log of that number. So here's the product of the exponent and the log of that number. So we can do that with these three examples here, making sure that we realize that we can bring that power out front and make it the product of 9 times the log base 6 of 3 is the way we would read that. Here I don't necessarily see a power right off, but I do have one if I change it from my radical notation into fractional exponent. So if you remember um, back in one of our earlier chapters, we did power over root. So this would be natural log of x to the one-third power. Again, this is a power now that I can bring out front and make that equivalent to one-third the natural log of x. And that would be what they want you to do in order to expand that expression as the direction states. <clears throat> Here, I also have a power of 2. This exponent can come out front and make that 2 times the log of an x plus 4. Okay, now again, as a reminder, this base is a 10. This base over here is one of those natural exponentials. But that is all that they want you to work with with these properties. Okay, being able to expand them, um, go from a small, just one log into multiple logs. Now, we can also do that multiple times here, and then we're going to kind of go backwards on our last problems. So now let's put it all together and use the logarithmic properties to expand each of these expressions. So these are going to have multiple parts of the properties within there. Notice here I have a power. I have a power if I write it as y to the one-third on that one, and I also have a product there. So I'm going to kind of write it above here as this so that we see that. And so I'm going to go ahead and take care of the product first. Let's go ahead and split it up into individual logs. With the product is the sum of the logs. So I would do log base b of x to the fourth plus log base b of that y to the one-third power. Now, notice we have a power on each one of these expressions, and by our, our third law or property, whatever you want to call it, we can bring these powers out front. So the final expansion of this problem would be 4 times the log base b of x plus 1 third times the log base b of y. So it's not that it's difficult, it's just again a process that you have to make sure that you uh, work with each one of the properties correctly. All right, let's look at this guy here. Now this one, I have something on top, then I have a product of these in the bottom, okay? So I'm going to do the quotient first, and then we're going to talk about the product. So if I have log base 5 of all of this, now first off, I'm going to exchange this for x to the power over root out front, which is an invisible 2. I'm going to write that as x to the 1 half, okay? So I'm going to do log base 5 of x to the 1 half. Now because of this division by our second law tells me I can take the difference of the individual logs. Now I'm going to at this point go ahead and write 25y cubed together, okay? Even though there is a product there, we're going to do that next, okay? So I'm going to um, go ahead and take care of this power. Since this is my only expression here, I'm going to bring that 1 half out front and write just this term as 1 half log base 5 of x, and that is completely done for that term. But for this one, with a product, now I have to expand that. Now the product of a log is the sum of the logs. 
So that means I'm going to expand into two terms. Now be very careful. That means now I have this minus in front of two terms, which is going to make a huge difference. So make sure that you watch that and that you do not forget that minus. So we're going to do log base 5 of 25 plus, because the product of the logs becomes the sum of the logs, and so we then get log base 5 of y cubed. Now, we still have a little bit of work. First thing I want to realize that I need to do is distribute that negative. But I also have a little bit of work that I can do here and that I can do here. Notice that the base is 5 and the number I have is 25. So 25 is actually a power of 5. So we would ask ourselves, what number, or what, 5 to what power, excuse me, 5 to what power gives me 25? And that answer is 2. So I'm going to rewrite my 1 half log base 5 of x. And I'm going to replace all of this with what it's equivalent to, which is the power that makes that true. What do we raise 5 to in order to get 25? It is 2. Now I'm going to distribute my negative, so this is going to be a minus. But what I can work on here is that this does have a power with that variable that I can actually bring that out front. Okay, so we're going to go minus log base 5 of y. And that right there, ladies and gents, is the... A final answer that you can do on expanding out that expression. So they'll have some that you just have to do one property on, and there'll be some properties that you are some problems where you have to do multiple properties in one, and that's perfectly okay. Okay, so I kind of call that in a forward since we're expanding it out. Now we're going to be contracting it down. Okay, and so we just practice expanding logarithmic expressions, taking one logarithmic expression and writing it as a multiple logarithmic expressions. Now, let's go backwards and condense the logarithmic expressions. This will take multiple expressions and then simplify them into one logarithmic expression. So here we want to express it as a single log. So we're going backwards in a sense. So here I have a sum of two logs. That means I can then make it the product of the m and the n. So going backwards into a single log, that means I can do log of 25 times 4, which... 25 times 4 is 100, and it just so happens, remember, this invisible base down here is a 10. So this guy right here is 10. So I'm looking at, if we go back to what we did in section 4.2, 10 to what power is equal to 100 would be what I'm looking for. Well, 10 squared equals 100. So I can actually bring that down to just a number as opposed to a logarithmic expression. Okay, now this one, I have a difference of two logs. Well, if we go back to our second property, that means that I can condense this to the quotient of these two logs. So I could write log of 7x plus 6 divided by x. Be careful simplifying. Don't cancel those x's because you can't cancel over here. So this actually is the best that I can write that condensed version. Okay. Next one, I see a 2 out front, I see a minus. So we have basically property 2 and property 3. The, pro the quotient and the power property is what we're going to work with. This 2 out front, if you recall, was one that we brought out front and had in front of the expression. So I'm going to revert back and make that a power. So what I get is log of x minus 3 squared minus the log of x. And now I can take care of the minus, which is resulting with the quotient when I go backwards. So just like what we had over here on the second problem, I can now write this as the log of x minus 3 squared all over x. And that would be my final answer. Okay. So with the variables, it's nice. You, don't, you definitely know you don't condense anything down. But when you have numbers and stuff, you might want to be very careful on those um, because, like, in this sense, we can condense it all the way down. All right, very good. I see a 2 out front. I'm going to bring it back inside the power. I'm also going to bring that 1 third back into the power as well. So that would result in a natural log of x squared plus the natural log of x plus to the one-third power. Now we've seen these fractional exponents. Remember we can write those as a radical if we so choose. Um, but with the sum, if I'm condensing now down into a single log, the sum means now that I take the product of these two expressions. So we're going to write it into one single log as x squared. And I'm going to go ahead and write that as a radical. Now, again, I'm not really sure. I would have to investigate on my lab math if they would take it with a fractional exponent. Obviously, if they say write it with radicals, you have to write it with a radical. But this here would be our final answer 
The only other option would be just to write this as what I have up here. Okay, so I'm not sure if it would take either one. All right, and our last one on this section is I have a number out front, a number out front, and a number out front. Of each one of these, that means I'm going to end up bringing those in as powers to each one. Okay, and so this becomes log base b of x to the 1 fourth minus log base b of 5 squared minus log base b of y to the 10th. Okay, now I have a couple subtractions in here and I'm going to revert yourself back to this problem that we had here. I had a couple subtractions where I can factor out and kind of bring that down into a product, which is probably the most um, correct process to use whenever you're doing that. But if you realize that when you have an expression that's being divided by two things in a product, like what we have here, this over this, what it resulted is that I ended up subtracting both of these when I distributed that negative. So if you realize that, this can very nicely come down into what it's going to be equivalent to, which would be log base b of, again, I'm going to write this as the fourth root of x, all over, this becomes a 25, and this would also be in the bottom with a minus of a y to the 10th. So I'm going to write 25y to the 10th, and that would be your final answer. Now, if you recognize that with the minuses, think of those as just in the division in the denominator part, but the way proper that you could do would be that you end up having log base b of x to the 1 fourth, and then factor out that negative to create, then when I go into a condensed mode, I can do the product of these two, 25y to the fifth, and then this is the division part. So whichever way that you see it, this step here you could possibly take out um, if you needed it, that step-by-step -step process. Okay? All right, very good. That's all we have for section 4.3, making sure that you can expand those logarithmic functions from a single log into multiples, and then take the multiple log expressions down into a single log using the three laws that we have on the front side of your sheet, which is the product, the quotient, and the power rule. So, until next time.